The goal of Sufism is not to acquire an intuitive knowledge of reality, but to be a servant of God. There is no stage higher than the stage of servanthood, and there is no truth beyond the Sharia. Man has been created to serve God. If love is kindled in man, whether in the beginning or during the course of his spiritual journey, the purpose is to disentangle him from things other than God. Love is never an end in itself. It is only a means to realize servanthood. One becomes a true servant of God when one is freed from the love and bondage of the world. Love is nothing but a means for an exclusive devotion to God. The last stage in the Sufi way is servanthood. Beyond it, there is no other stage. At this stage, the mystic finds no comparison between him and his Lord. He is wanting in everything, whereas his Lord is self-sufficient in essence as well as attributes. He sees nothing common between his essence and divine essence, between his attributes and divine attributes, between his acts and divine acts. He even avoids saying that the world is a shadow of God, for that implies comparison and analogy. He simply affirms that God is creator and that he is created. Beyond that, he claims nothing. Some people are led in the course of their spiritual journey to the belief in one actor They see no actor other than God. But the mystics know that God is the creator and not the doer of acts. The doctrine of one actor is the root cause of blasphemy. I will explain through an example. Suppose that a juggler sitting behind a screen conjures up forms of some objects and produces in them some wonderful movements. Those who have penetrating eyes know that the creator of the movements in the forms is the man behind the screen. Although the movements are performed by the forms, hence they say that it is the forms which move and not the juggler. And they are right in what they say. The assertion of one actor is an act of intoxication. The truth is that there are many actors, but the creator of acts is only one. To the same category of beliefs belongs the doctrine of one being. It is the product of intoxication and ecstasy. The criterion for the correctness of mystical ideas is that they agree with the clear truths of the shar. If they diverge a hair's breadth, they are, to be sure, a product of intoxication. The truth is what has been established by the ulama and of the Allah Sunnah wal Jamaa, all else is blasphemy and heresy, and the result of intoxication and ecstasy. Perfect agreement with the Shar is possible only at the stage of servanthood. In all stages before that, there is always an element of intoxication. Somebody put a question to Sheikh Bahauddin Naqshband. 
What is the purpose of Saluk? He replied, The purpose is to know in detail what you know in brief, and to perceive in vision what you know through arguments. The Sheikh did not say that the purpose is to acquire truths beyond the truth of the Shar. It is, however, a fact that the mystic receives different ideas during his saluk. But when he reaches the end, those superfluous ideas disappear in the air. He then perceives the same truths of the Shar in detail and comes out from the narrow enclosure of reason to the open space of Kashif. The prophet receives truths through revelations. The mystic receives the same truths through inspiration, directly from the same source. And the ulama of the shar get them through deduction from revelation and state them in principle. The prophet receives truths in detail, and so does the mystic. But there is a difference. The former truth depends on itself, whereas the latter depends upon the former and is subject to its authority. The object of Sufi Tariqa is nothing but to produce conviction in the beliefs of the Sharia and to facilitate the observance of its rules. After one has acquired right beliefs and subjected oneself to the rules of the Sharia, one should, if God so wills, enter the path of the Sufis. But one should not pursue it in order to get something over and above the beliefs and the practices of the Shar or acquire something new. The purpose of following the Sufi way is to gain a conviction in the objects of faith that cannot be weakened by the doubts of a skeptic or shaken by the remarks of an objector. The conviction which is founded on arguments is not firm, and one who pursues reasoning does not get certitude know that it is through the remembrance of God that one gets the peace and satisfaction of the heart. This is the object of the Sufi Tariqa regarding belief. Regarding the practices of the Shar, the object is to make their performance easy and spontaneous, to remove sluggishness, and to subdue the carnal self. Likewise, the purpose of the Sufi Saluk is not to see the forms and images of transcendental realities, or behold colors and lights. They are nothing more than a play or fun. Material forms and physical lights are not less interesting if one wants to have fun. Why should one leave them and run after spiritual forms and lights and take up austere and difficult practices for that purpose? 
forms, these or others, and lights, physical or spiritual, are all created by God. He transcends them altogether. They are nothing but his signs and proofs. What should I say about hearing songs or performing dances or entering into a trance or inducing an ecstasy? All the states and experiences which are produced by unlawful means are, in my view, a kind of temptation with which God tests men. People whom God gives latitude in this way undergo these states, experience union, and have revelations and visions in terms of the forms of this world. The mystics of Greece and the Brahmin saints of India had all these experiences. The sign of the validity of an experience is first, that it agrees with the doctrines of the Sharia, and second, that in order to have it, one does not commit anything which is forbidden or which is doubtful. Know that music and dance are but frivolous games. The experience of Fana and Bakwa is the essence of Walayat. Its purpose is to produce conviction the object of man's creation is to worship and obey God as he has ordained. And the object of worship and obedience is to achieve conviction, yakin, which is the essence of faith. This may be the meaning of the verse. Worship and obey God till hata you get conviction, yakin. For hata introduces a purpose as it introduces an end. The verse may, therefore, be taken to mean worship and obey God in order to get conviction. In other words, the faith that one has before worship and obedience is a formal rather than a real faith, which means conviction. God says, O you who believe, believe, that is to say, O you who have a formal belief, try to have the real belief by worshiping God and obeying him as he orders. The object of Fana and Bakwa, which are the essence of Walayat, is to acquire this conviction and nothing else. If one understands Fana in God and Bakwa by God in any other sense which suggests the fusion of man into God, it is a blasphemous distortion of faith. Many things come from the mouth of a Sufi in the state of intoxication, which it is his duty to eventually overcome. Turn to God and ask for his forgiveness. Ibrahim ibn Shaiban, one of the great Sufis, mentioned in the Tabakat, says, the real Fana and Bakwa 
consists in sincerely believing in the unity of God, Iklasul Wahdania, and honestly living as his bondservant, Sihatul Ubudiya. Anything over and above it is sheer error and infidelity. By God, what he says is true. His words witness to his rectitude. Fana in God means effacing oneself in carrying out the will of God. You may understand sire illallah or meditation leading to God and sire fillah or meditation on God on the same lines. Visions and auditions are not the end of Sufism. They are mere shadows, and God transcends them absolutely. What should I say of the frivolous ideas of the Sufis? And what should I speak of their experiences? In the hereafter, their experiences and findings shall not be worth half a penny unless they are weighed in the balance of the shar and their revelations and inspirations will not be worth half a grain unless they are tested on the criterion of the Quran and the Sunnah. The purpose of pursuing the path of Sufism is to strengthen conviction in the objects of faith as stated by the Shar, which is what faith really means, as well as to acquire the ability to perform with ease the duties of the Shar as described in Fiqh. There is no purpose beyond them for the vision of God is promised in the next life and cannot be had in this life. The revelations and visions in which the Sufis revel give them nothing but the pleasure of a shadow and the joy of a semblance. God transcends them absolutely. I am in an impasse here. If I tell the truth about visions and revelations as it is, I fear that it may discourage the travelers of this path and affect their pursuit. But if, on the other hand, I do not tell the truth, I fear that I shall be guilty of selling the untruth as truth in spite of knowing the truth. Walis are of two kinds. Those who remain absorbed in God and those who are returned to the world. The latter are superior to the former. Glory be to him who has combined light with darkness and joined the transphenomenal, which is above space with the phenomenal, which is in space. And glory be to him who has created in light such a strong love for darkness that it seeks to unite with darkness in order that it may, through the union, increase in its brilliance and grow in its radiance. It is just as when you want to polish a mirror in order to make it brighter. You coat it with dust so that it may shine more brightly by contrast with the blackness of the dust and increase in its brilliance by contrast with the dirtiness of the clay. When the light is infatuated by the beauty of its phenomenal love and overpowered by its union 
with the material body, it forgets the vision it had of the transcendent and forgets itself and its own existential qualities, Tawabi Wujudihi. When this happens, it goes down along with its love to the level of the people of the left hand, Ashabul Mashama, and is deprived of the honor of the people of the right hand, Ashabul Mayamana. If it continues in that suffocating union and does not come out into the open air of freedom, it is completely doomed for it fails to achieve the goal for which it has been created or develop the powers which it has been given. In short, it is lost and finished. But if, on the other hand, it is saved by God's grace and redeemed by his mercy, it may rise up. Remember what it has forgotten and return to God saying, to you is my Hajj and my Umrah, O my love, not to bricks and stones which others visit. So if it is absorbed in contemplating God on proper lines and concentrates on him in the best possible way, darkness surrenders to it and is submerged in its illuminations. When this absorption increases to an extent that it forgets the material adjunct altogether and forgets itself and its existential accompaniments, Tawabi Wujudahi, completely, it vanishes in the vision of the light of lights and reaches its goal only with a veil in between. At this moment, it achieves self-annihilation, fana, both physical, jasadi, and psychic, rohi. If after this self-annihilation, it subsists in that vision, it completes its annihilation and subsistence Baka. It is at this moment that it can rightly claim Walayat. After reaching this point, it may remain completely absorbed in the object of its vision and forget itself in it forever. Or it may return to the world and take up calling people to God, the great and the glorious in such a way that it lives with its inner self united with God and the outer being turned to the world. At this stage, light is liberated from darkness embedded in it in order that it may devote itself to God. By virtue of this liberation, it is entitled to join the people of the right hand of God. To be sure, God does not have a right hand or a left hand, but we speak of his right hand, for it stands for favor, blessing, and grace all combined. A hadith says, both his hands are right hands. Darkness following light occupies itself in worship and obedience. I mean by the transcendental light the spirit, ar ruh rather, the reality of the spirit. And I mean by darkness, surrounded by space, the soul, anafs. In the same sense, I use the words, the inner self, al and the outer self, azahir. One may ask, how is it that the saints who are absorbed in God are conscious of the world around, attend to things, and have intercourse with people. What does the annihilation of the self and perpetual absorption mean? 
And what is the difference between the people who are perpetually absorbed and those who are returned to the world and asked to preach? By self-annihilation and complete absorption, I mean the absorption of the spirit as well as the soul after the soul has submerged itself into the illumination of the spirit, as I have explained above. One is conscious of the world through his senses, faculties, and organs which form the soul. It is the being as a whole which is absorbed and annihilated in the illumination which is experienced by the spirit, but its various faculties continue to be conscious as before without any wrong happening to them. The saint who is returned to the world, his soul, after having resigned itself, comes out from the illumination and takes up preaching he develops a feeling for the world, and because of that feeling, his preaching is rewarded with success. As to the claim that the soul is a unity of which the senses and other faculties form parts, that may be understood in this way. The soul is related to the conical heart, which is in turn Relate it to the spirit through the comprehensive reality of the heart. All messages from the spirit first reach it, i.e. this reality, and then through it all the faculties and organs separately. Hence, it has in a sense a presence in the soul. This is the difference between the two groups. Let it be known that the first group of saints are people of intoxication, and the second are people of sobriety. The first have their own honor, but the second are superior to them. The state of intoxication behooves the saints and the state of sobriety behooves the prophets. May God give us the honor of the saints and favor us with the emulation of the prophets.